line of boundaries, uh, whether positive or, or, or negative, to the to one for the the politics of uh, identification incident, and also for the state of peace and conflict between the two countries and peace and, co uh, and conflict inside any of these countries. <laughs> I believe, if, if, if I got you uh, correctly, you are raising an issue which is also uh, critically important, and that's why I spoke of distortions. Uh, there's always an objective uh, element in identity, and that is to say there are certain factors that can clearly be discerned and identify people, and there's a subjective factor, and that is how people uh, feel. What do you think you are? Uh, you know, uh, we are told by social scientists that it is not so much what you objectively are that counts, it's what you think you are. And uh, what you objectively are is not what is business if you think yourself in a particular uh, way. Which is correct if your self-perception was your own isolated issue. But if the way you perceive yourself impacts on others, and it is erroneous or does not reflect the realities, uh, then it becomes a matter of public concern and you should be corrected. But you know, in all my extensive travels around the world in connection with issues of internal uh, displacement, resulting from conflict, and prevention of genocide, I always hear two versions, uh, historical versions. One is we have always lived together. We intermarried. We shared our happy occasions and sad occasions. We were fully in harmony. We don't know where this problem has come from. The other version, of course, is to see the problem as deep-rooted and recurrent. And of course, both are correct. Because when you have two groups living together as neighbors, there will inevitably be conflicts. But by the same token, they will develop methods of resolving their differences. The question then becomes, when they get into conflict, they only remember the negatives in the history. When they achieve peace, they only they remember the positive. You know, I remember doing some research among the world thinker at a time when they had just fought with the Syrian in the 70s. And the interview I conducted, the theme of being different went on from creation, was part of the interview, so was going back to creation, <coughs> went back to creation to now to the vision of the future. Nothing unites us with these people. We're different. God created us different. Then after we had a peace agreement, and I interviewed people again, the story had changed. We are going to see our one. You know, who were raised by brothers. And uh, the whole theme of even the future, we are headed towards integration. <coughs> we'll be assimilated. We'll assimilate one another. We turn that and we all have that. So I think it's a question of uh, two things. First of all, in the short run, you have to accommodate diversity in a way that is constructive. In the long run, you have also to see the possibilities of transcending the differences and fostering the form of integration so that people begin to identify themselves as Sudanese, South Sudanese, or whatever they want. I'm intrigued by two versions of this approach. One is in Rwanda. After the genocide in Rwanda, Rwanda adopted a policy of saying there is no such a thing as Tutsi or Hutu. Well, we all Rwandese, and reference to ethnicity was almost forbidden. It's actually forbidden. Whereas, in the case of Burundi, they recognize that there are these ethnic differences, and that the solution is to accommodate them through various methods of, of political arrangements. And then, uh, I feel, to some extent, both have some validity. As an aspiration, Rwanda, I think, is right in hoping that people will one day go beyond being Tutsis or Hutus. 
But Burundi is right in saying that in the short run, for now, we have to accommodate the differences. So I think in Sudan, whether we talk about North Sudan or South Sudan, you are right that intermarriage has really cut, you know, uh, across the boundaries and people, there's a basis for coming together. You know, I remember in Burundi talking to audiences where many people, some of them look typical Tutsi, the way we told Tutsi now, some of them look typical Hutus, many I couldn't tell. And so I asked the foreign minister, can you always tell a Tutsi from a Hutu? And he said, yes you can, but with a margin of error of 35%. <laughs> Someone told me that in the whole, the margin is even bigger. <laughs> the margin of error. It's <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to embarrass uh, Ali here. Uh, his grandfather, as you know, you know was uh, Sultan of Darfur, uh, who became, in a sense, a unifier of the Darfuris. And in a sense, all of the Aphorians were being viewed as Arabs. Well, who we my brother here? <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, and this is true of, uh, I wrote there was a child.